Hey everyone, this is Colt. Welcome to my Webpack YouTube mini course thing. It was originally supposed to be a single standalone video on Webpack. Clearly it spiraled out of control into a 10 part course of around two hours or so of content. So I hope you enjoy it. Uh, there's a couple things I have to get out of the way first. The most important one is that there is a GitHub repo that goes along with this course. So if you follow along, if you wanna see the code, I mean, I do type every line from scratch, so it is a true code along, but if you just wanna check the code out at any point, use this repo, view it in the browser, there's a bunch of commits with nice detailed messages, clone it down if you'd like to use Git, if you feel comfortable checking out each commit. Uh, and I'll reference throughout the video, you know, I'm on commit seven going to commit eight and that sort of thing. Okay, the next most important thing, I know everyone's gonna ask, why am I wearing a hat? <sighs> I need a haircut, okay? And I thought this was better than the alternative. You see what I'm working with here? Yeah. Okay, on to important point number three. Uh, I know I say this every time, as well as every YouTuber on earth, but I really appreciate it if you subscribe, if you comment, let me know what you think. Uh, I'm, not ask, or I'm not saying this for pity's sake, but I do want you to know that making this 10 video series takes about four to five days of pretty consistent effort. It's a lot of work. Um, and all that I ask is if you enjoy it, you can let me know, I always appreciate that. But also uh, share it with other people. Um, I'd love to reach people I don't usually reach. If you think they'd like to know something about Webpack, please share it, I really do appreciate it. Okay, so onto the course content. This video is about Webpack in general. So if you already know how Webpack works, what it does, what the point is, um, then you might wanna skip this or just fast forward through it. In the next video, we start with installation. So because it is 10 videos, I did decide to spread things out instead of just rushing through everything. So I will not take offense if you speed through any videos or skip them. That's what the GitHub repo is for as well. If I were taking this course, I'd probably just start by looking at the code. I've always liked to do that before I watch any videos. Okay, so let's get going. Let's talk about what Webpack is. This is the Webpack homepage, and I like how this image explains it. Webpack can be very confusing and intimidating and cause many headaches when you're actually setting it up and configuring it, but its mission, its core goal is very straightforward. It takes a bunch of different assets, different files of different types, JavaScript, images like SVG, PNG, JPEGs, uh, CSS, style sheets, or less, or SAS, all sorts of different files, and it combines them down, it bundles them into a smaller group of files. One file, maybe, or one file for your JavaScript, one for your CSS, one for your third-party JavaScript, Vendor.js, and one for your app code, App.js. It's very configurable, which is where it can become a little tedious and pretty intimidating to people who are learning it but the idea behind it is very simple. So in addition to just bundling things together and just shoving them into a file, it's also managing dependencies. It's making sure that code that needs to load first is loading first. So if you write a file that depends on three other files, those three need to be included first. So often it's a very complex web of dependencies and larger apps, and it would be very difficult to manage it on your own. Webpack does it for you, and it spits out one or two or however many files you tell it to bundle. And I like how the GitHub repo explains it. Webpack is a bundler for JavaScript and friends, packs many modules into a few bundled assets, and through something called loaders, which we'll talk about, modules can be CommonJS, ES6, CSS, images, JSON, CoffeeScript, blah, 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 the list goes on. So we're gonna see how to do a lot of this stuff, but first I wanna show you an example of an app that is already built. We'll be creating our own from scratch and configuring Webpack, but this app is substantially more complicated, way more dependencies than what we'll be doing in this course. So this is an app that I'm building for my upcoming React course. It's a, a color pickers website. So there's a bunch of color pickers. You can click on one, you know, you can copy a color. Uh, there's a whole bunch of features, things like changing from hex to RGB to RGBA. All of that involves a library that helps figure out colors and, and convert between different color types. I'm using a library to get these nice sliders and this little snack bar thing that pops up down there. Uh, there's transitions. I'm using the React router. Whereas my point is there's a lot of different stuff going on that is third-party code that I'm depending on. There's some code to help with drag and drop. There's code for a color picker. So I can create new palettes, reorder them, I save it. And there's code in addition for this emoji picker here so I can select an emoji. Anyway, that's enough with the app itself, but it's sufficiently complicated where I think it makes sense uh, as a good example for Webpack. So if we take a look at the code, there are, I don't know, 20 something JavaScript components or React components that I've written, plus 20 something CSS files, plus a whole bunch of dependencies, lots of modules. 
things that I'm using like uh, React Color, I'm using this Emoji Mart, I'm using uh, Material UI, React of course, some form validator libraries, there's a lot of dependencies, and this is for a single file, and there's 20 something of them. So at the end of the day, each one of them has at least this many dependencies, and it's very tricky to determine what needs to load first if I was manually including script tags for each one of these 20 files. It would not be sustainable. So this is built on top of Create React App, which is a pretty standard way of, of creating new React apps. Uh, and it uses Webpack behind the scenes in addition to some other things, but Webpack is really responsible for the bulk of the functionality behind Create React App. So it's gonna take all of my JavaScript and combine it into one file. It takes all of my CSS and combines it into one file. It does a lot more involving things like Babel, for example, but at its core, that's what it's doing. It's bundling my assets and making sure that it's managing the dependencies. So if I wanted to run the application, I can run npm start, which will run it in dev mode, which starts a local server, but it still uses Webpack. And if I open up the Chrome inspector, you can see in sources, there are, let's see, just a couple JavaScript files, bundle.js, and then main chunk.js. And this contains all of my code combined into one file. There's some weird stuff going on uh, if you're trying to read it using eval. Basically, each one of these is a single file that I wrote, a massive string, and it's being wrapped in a Webpack module. And this is keeping track of what it exports and what it depends on. And you can actually see, for example, this is uh, mini palette.js. Okay, that's one of the components. And if I keep scrolling over, you can see things like this. Webpack imported module six equals Webpack require of React. So Webpack require is how Webpack is keeping track of what is imported where, what needs to be exported, what uses what, basically manages dependencies. So it replaces my imports and exports with these Webpack requires. So if I kept going, it's pretty annoying to scroll, but you'd see, okay, Webpack require mini color box. That's another component that this component imports. It relies on that component. And what might surprise you to learn is that it's actually importing all of my CSS as well into this file. So it didn't make me a separate CSS file because I'm running in development mode. And I'll show you just a moment what it does in production. And now if I instead decide to run this in production, which I'm not really going to run it, I'm going to export, I'm going to spit out a build folder. So npm run build, this is a command with create react app. You'll see that it makes me a couple of files once it finishes, it can take a while, which is why we don't export these CSS files in development when we're constantly changing things because it takes forever to recompile or to rebundle. Okay, so that just finished. And if we start by going to my text editor, scrolling way up, I'll close this down here, there's now a build directory. And inside of that build, if we look at our JavaScript, there's a couple files, there's these source maps we can ignore, but they're all minified now. This is the same stuff I was looking at earlier when I was using the dev version, but now it's been all crammed together and minified, and I have separate CSS files, but if we look at them, there all of my CSS separate files have been combined into one and also minified. So Webpack is doing all of this for us. Again, it's managing dependencies, it's bundling code together. And now if we look at index.html, which is somewhere in here, there's only, what, two script tags at the bottom and one or two link tags at the top instead of 20 or 30 or 50 separate script tags that I would have to do manually. Okay, so hopefully that makes it clear what Webpack does, why you would wanna use it. It's a huge headache on large apps to try and do something without Webpack or something comparable. So I'll end this video here. In the next video, we're gonna start from a new application where we're going to install Webpack and set everything up from scratch, and that will carry on for a couple videos. There's a lot to cover, honestly. If you enjoyed this video, my cat and I really appreciate it. If you share it with anyone you think would get something out of it, uh, leave a comment, subscribe, please, turn on notifications. Oh, so annoying asking you to do that. Anyway, uh, have a good day, and I'll see you in the next video. All right, thanks.